guys welcome back to another time-lapse video I'm so happy to bring you this painting because it's taken so so long to do and this is also another special video because it is a part one of two um, I had so much footage and documentation on this painting if I would have put it in one continuous video it probably would have been at least 40 to 45 minutes worth of content and everything piled in there so I was like this is way too much and I edited it down a little bit, but um, I got it to a, a point where it's about halfway. So this first one is a halfway point uh, of what would be a full video. But um, this painting's special because it's the third installment on this channel that's been a personalized piece. It's not a customer's piece or, or a quest or anything like that. And uh, for that reason, I simply named it three. So without further ado, here's a first part one of three.
finally got to a good uh, stopping point on this. I've just been cranking on it, working and working. I finally took a decent enough break and stepped away from it and I'm just coming back and I really enjoy it and really like where this one's going. Um, from up here, I don't know if you can see this paper. This is just kind of a general idea of what I'm going to do. But down in this corner right here, it's going to be a motorcycle and uh, those old school kind of like just tent. I don't know really what it was or any material that they used, but I've seen a bunch of cool pictures of bikes with it's tied to the handlebars and then tied to the um, the CC bar on the back and they would make like a makeshift tent and that would be kind of like the overnight stay or whatever and uh, they would camp like that so I'm gonna do something like this here but then also have the door open with somebody sitting right here in the campfire in this general area and up here I do have some flags kind of like some almost like some war type looking flags I don't know I don't know if we'll go with that idea but we'll see I may do it in pencil first on here see if I like it but um, this van is basically everything that I would do if I could fully go crazy on some type of Chevy G10 just chopped it lowered it as uh, much as it could be uh, you know, without the 70s stance, without the rake stance, you know, just slam it on the ground. Um, I might try to put some side pipes in here. Uh, and the reason I say that is because I want this to kind of look like a, a dried out field, sort of kind of. So we're gonna be going to be doing that. That's why this is kind of yellow and, and, and uh, browns and stuff. But got some sunlight reflecting off of the paint and gonna do that another little sunlight line here gonna go back in these trees and make uh, some sunset light right here and maybe even a little further back but I don't want to uh, really mess up anything of what I've got going on back here but just a sunset scene and gonna keep that in mind as I keep doing the lighting and everything gotta finish up this back wheel may do a little more orange on this chrome right here just to give it more of that sunset sunset effect on the back there but really liking where it's going Alright, so with most of the exterior done, at least for the uh, back half, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I'm going to keep adding detail as I go, but put in the gold wing door, and it's going to be up, of course. Um, like I said, going to have somebody sitting right here. And as far as the interior, the exterior of the van wanted it purple. Something almost so black and so dark that you only see the purple in the highlights, so... That's the only places I really put purple. The rest of the van is actually flat black, but that will change when the clear coat hits it. All this will be gloss. I did put some gray on the tires, just a little bit to divide them from the shadow back here, but I doubt you'll be able to see that once we put in the tall grass and kind of some stuff around it. But focusing on the interior, I kind of want to do something that's going to pop. And being that I already have this black, uh, background to kind of work with. I'm going to try to use that to my advantage. The white here, at least, is just for to give me a layout and a kind of a blueprint where to go. Um, but I'm thinking just to make it pop and to make it have a whole lot of life inside, I want to do a really bright red. So I'm going to do some burgundies first, some maybe almost so black it blends in but then gonna hit some red, really, really bright red highlights and try to make it kind of look like crushed velvet and uh, very soft material inside. So, might have to look up a few reference pictures just kind of get some ideas of how that looks in some light, but gonna do 
that on the gold wing door as well to match the insides that way if the door was closed it would all match together of course so gotta do a really really bright red interior just to make it it's almost because this part of the painting is almost in a center so I want it just your eye to be just bam it's a lot of purple a lot of pinks and blacks and blues but just a bright red just to draw your eye in right dead to the center of the painting and make your eye kind of explore from there we're gonna do some bright red crushed velvet, very soft 70s stuff.
right, so got the van looking pretty good for right now. Um, there is one thing I want to do before I say I'm completely done with this and is make the paint actually look like it has metal flake and has a lot of sparkle in it. So I'm going to kind of mess around with a few little things, but I have a pretty good idea on how to do it. Um, it's going to be a little tricky because I already have this orange reflective on there from the maybe like the sun is over here. But we're going to figure that out as we go. And uh, I'm just going to start really fine tuning everything and making it actually look like it has metal flake in it. So, but I did use the color shift paint as well with it. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but as uh, you look at the painting in different light, the van I think will go from kind of like a black purple to a darker blue. So we'll have some of that in there. But I think just a little bit of actual metal flake in it will make it pop a little more and stand out from this background.
right, so now that we've got the skeleton cowboy in here, which I think come out really good. Uh, I've got a few other little details I'm going to do to him. But uh, you can see where I brought his legs all the way down. Maybe like a little bit of his boots there. But I did it over the grass. I'm just going to put more of this grass right there in front of him so you can really tell that it's, it's buried in this background. Um, and doing little details like that always helps paintings look, you know, to me a little more realistic. So little touches like that. Going to put... I do have an idea for the campfire right here, and I know that I want some light kind of reflecting off of them, but I don't want to do those details yet till I exactly know uh, where I want to put the campfire. I think I'm going to put it somewhere in here, but I want to make sure. I got a few other details I want to do around the campfire and stuff that won't, you know, that'll make sense. So placing that, and then I'll figure out the reflections of light from the campfire itself.